All right, Joel. Joel, uh, where'd you grow up? Where are you from originally? I'm originally from New York City. I was born in Manhattan, um, but I was raised a few years in Allentown, Pennsylvania, which is just about a, a 90 minute drive from New York City. So you're in New York now? Absolutely, yeah. Uh, I, since 13 years old, I've been, uh, I came back from Allentown, Pennsylvania and been here since I'm 35 right now. And tell me about your family growing up. Um, so growing up with my family, unfortunately, it wasn't really that good. Um, I find myself now at 35 years old, just learning to um, communicate with my family, especially my mother and my father. Uh, we have a history of, of drug abuse in my family. Um, and also I was taken away from my family when I was a child, is why I've been going back and forth from Pennsylvania to New York City. So um, it's not really that good with my relationship, but it can get better with, with patience and communication. Um, I constantly talk to my mom every single day, even if it's for five or 10 minutes, just to see how she's doing. She is 65 years old. Um, my father, I haven't communicated with him for over 10 years, so I don't really know what's going on with him. But uh, uh, again, you know, uh, we had a bumpy, bumpy uh, childhood and I found myself going from house to house, from state to state. How would you describe your childhood in general? Besides that, um, I was a very playful child, um, always jokey, sense of humor. Um, I had a lot of friends in Pennsylvania, which I actually missed. Um, uh, at that time, there was a lot of Caucasians in Allentown. It wasn't as much as a mixed race as it is now in 2022. So we used to always go out and play like Rover, Manhunt, uh, Truth for Dares, you know, what kids like to experience. And you know, um, that's what really stood with me. Even when I turned 35 years old, um, I find myself fascinating about these, these experiences that I had grew up with um, when I was a child and miss it every single day that you know, I think about it um, and, and only uh, seem to uh, watch it on television or movies. And you know, so it, it is a little heartbreaking. Um, my childhood changed when I came to New York City. I immediately got caught up with the wrong group at 13 years old when I ran away and uh, not even four or five months, I was already arrested for uh, criminal sale control substance um, in the second degree to an undercover cop from the 46th precinct of the Bronx. And um, I was too young to be uh, sent to prison. Obviously I was only 13. So, you know, my mom had to come pick me up, but you know, at that time my mom still felt guilty of being taken away, uh, me being taken away. So I, I guess my mom wasn't really that good of given discipline to her child. I guess she feared that we'll always bring up the past of telling her, you can't tell me anything. But so she never had a chance or even tried to even discipline me, but accepted my, my, my bad behaviors. For example, when I got released and she had to pick me up in the precinct, she'll tell me to don't sell to the cop, you know, instead of smacking me or punishing me like a parent is supposed to do, like a kid is supposed to um, have but um, instead, I, I didn't get that. Um, I pretty much had like a friend growing up in my family and it just still like that ever since. I'm sorry. That's it. You, you finished school? Um, I dropped out of seventh grade again because I ran away from Pennsylvania at 13. And um, I didn't want my mom and my nieces or my sisters in New York City getting in trouble for me running away and not listening to my father and the police officers in Pennsylvania that if I do run away again, they will take everyone. So um, I pretty much kept it quiet until I got arrested um, for, the, for the criminal sale control substance the first time. And then I was forced to go to school uh, upon release. So um, I, I, I dropped out at seventh grade and uh, I tried to go back to the school, but again, I had, I had no, no kind of support or no type of um, structure for a 13 year old child that really needs to keep pushing him. You know, he's, I'm, I was just not capable of making decisions at 13 years old by myself, unfortunately. Um, so I just found myself dropping back out of school and going back to selling drugs again. Um, the only people that did accept me, whether I was bad or good, the only ones that really um, was there for me that I thought at 13 years old were my my bad influence friends were, were way older than me. I mean, I'm 13, they're like in their 20s. And I just found myself going back there and dropping back out. And my mom and my family just never found the, the strength 
or the courage to even try to, uh, to discipline me, you know, at 13 years old. Um, I got arrested again the second time and I met a woman that was way older than me. And that's another uh, story. And after that, I, I got arrested for, um, and went to juvenile. And then I ended up getting my GED in the shock program um, and graduated. And it's why I catch myself now, especially, which is not good. It's weird of dreaming and thinking about this boot camp that I've been at. Because um, unfortunately, these are the only people that helped me. Um, unfortunately, these were the only people that didn't give up on me. Um, as much as I, 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 was, a, I was not listening, um, they, they disciplined me to the point where I, I wanted to change. They disciplined me to the point where change occurred to me. I, I became smarter. I became stronger. I became healthier, um, cleaner, more focused. And ever since I got released from there, it's just, I didn't know what, I, I went back to the same route with no discipline, no structure. And they're actually still with me as I grow. This is why I, I really lack a lot of, um, any kind of support unless it's with law enforcement or or military type um kind of um individuals uh you know individuals that are that are homeowners and private citizens um, i mean these are the people that i really looked up for even if it was only for 90 days it sounds like it's discipline that you long for uh, it's discipline that I, I long for it's discipline that i urge for um because you connect that discipline as being love Absolutely. Uh, I, I, I connected the discipline from the drill instructors of forcing me to shine my boots to the point where I could see my face on my toe, uh, forcing me to crease my uniforms all over again because it was just a half an inch off or ripping off the Irish pendants on your button down shirts that the military are, uh, individuals normally call and describe that in their bases. Um, learning how to wake up at 530, getting yelled at as a sorry, shit bird, do it again, you know, it, 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 throughout, throughout all that, deep down inside, I knew he loved me. I knew that person cared for me. It's what made me continue thinking about these people. Um, and it's, it's always the truth when they say that, you know, we're not going to follow you when you go home. You know, the test starts the first, the first day of the test it actually starts when you're home. Because you're not going to have a drill instructor or a DI in the train station every five seconds of when you're wrong. And then sometimes I just wish that I never, I never left from there. Sometimes and I find myself going to jail on purpose and violating parole because I just couldn't manage out here. And I knew automatically they're not going to send me to the regular prison where there's no care. But they're going to send me back to this intensive military uh, boot camp for another 90 days. And um, uh, which you actually look forward to. I look forward six times, wow. six times to the point where they told me, dude, you're, this is not normal. Like you have to stop coming. <laughs> you're literally Willard man now because I was in Willard Drug Treatment Campus right. in Romulus, New York. So your agoraphobia started at what point? My agoraphobia? The phobia? Yeah. Um, it started to the point where um, as, as a child, I mean, every time I, I felt like I, I, I go out I find myself in either wrong crowds where I used to be previously, um, or when I go and try to communicate with family, or even try to get some kind of support or some kind of startup where I can continue mine. Uh, I found I find myself being betrayed or, or alone or back turned, and then that fears me inside because as much as the bad that crime that I committed for selling drugs to an undercover cop when I was a child, those people at the boot camp they never judged me. They never turned their backs on me. As many times I screwed up, they were constantly there on me, dedicating. And this is what made me change. This is why I have not been in prison for over 20 years. Right, but, but now the lifestyle you're leading today is... is it's, it's pretty much the same yeah. lifestyle. I've been, I'm, I'm not the same lifestyle I'm living at 13 years old as far as the breaking the law, but the same lifestyle I'm living as 13 years old with no kind of support, no trust for society. 
in the streets. So describe your existence today. You, you, you told me you haven't been out of your apartment. I, have, I don't go out my house no more um, since the day. pandemic. Um, today is your first day out of the house for, in two years, you said? I'm not going to say the, the first time out completely, but I do run dogs. I, 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 I end up running the dog business through Rover.com, and I found that I am great at what I do. Um, so there are times that I do, I do step out my house to walk a dog or two for just about five or 10 minutes around my block and then go back up. Um, as far as the dogs, if I, if I don't have a person at my house where I'm, I'm renting a room at right now, the roommate, and I ask her son if he wants to make 10 or 15 bucks, I'll offer him that so he can take the dogs because I really don't want to go out because I'm so used to being in the house. But if no one wants to do it, I have to maintain my professionality and put my mental, my mental state of mind somewhere far away because this is the only thing I have left. And no one gave it to me but myself and the people that gave me the discipline to make me change when I was in boot camp. So you have a roommate now? Yeah, I have a roommate, which is not a good relationship either. You know, um, so again, I'm 35. I've been finding myself house to house. I traveled to California, got stranded out there. I lived in the state of Vermont and St. Albans for about a year. I lived in Chesterfield, New Jersey, uh, between uh, Crosswicks and Bordentown, New Jersey, for about a year and a half. Pennsylvania, New York, and I just uh, I end up coming back because I either get stuck or stranded, and I don't know how to communicate to find a, a support system in the beginning where I can start maintaining myself. But do you do you have like a social life? Just even if it's just with your roommate? I don't even socialize with my roommate at all. Because again, um, I, we try to communicate, but I guess I, I don't know how to communicate with people no more. So the, I, I try to avoid any type of altercation or any misunderstandings, whether it's a roommate or out, people outside or even people in the store. So you just stay in your room and that's it? I even do my food shopping through Amazon Fresh every single month. Of, if I need clothes, sneakers, I'll order. If I need my laundry washed, since I don't have a washing machine in my house, there's a laundry downstairs. They come upstairs to pick up my laundry and I pay them for a fold and wash. Anything I could, if I had no choice but to go out, then I'll go out as quick as possible and pray to God that nothing happens because I don't know how to communicate well with someone that comes to me very violent. And unfortunately, where I live in the neighborhood, it's just getting worse because everyone seems to be going crazy, but everyone doesn't have the capability of me of maintaining it. But you're communicating well with me right now. You see? Because I have to, because I, 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 I want my video and my mental health awareness to be out there. I communicate with my pet owners very professionally. I make them feel very comfortable and trustworthy to me. I have a talent. I have experience of, of learning to be a part of society. But I don't have the power to convince someone to give me an opportunity. As much as I keep on showing. Like I just showed you now that I'm communicating very well with you. And it, it feels good to hear it every time. But that's all I get. Then they forget about, and then I'm back alone. And my dogs, that's why I always just take care of dogs. Cause Have you had girlfriends or anything like that? I had girlfriends, but I didn't learn how to... Um, again, when I was 13 and I committed that, uh, my, mind, my mother signed custody over to my ex-girlfriend because she was 34 and I was 14, turning 14. So from 14 years old to pretty much a few years ago from my, lex my last ex-girlfriend, they all have been older women. Um, I don't know, maybe it's because of the lack of my mom. How and much older? <sighs> uh, I was 14 with my first one. She was 34 or 36, 30, 36. Yeah, I was 14, she was 36. We broke up when I turned 17 and she turned 39. And then after that, I went to, with some other lady in the Bronx named Mina Lisa. She was 46 and I was just coming out of boot camp at 19 years old. And then just two years ago, I broke up with my ex-girlfriend Marie. She's 43. But you know, I'm 33 when I broke up with her. You know, I'm 35. So you like older women or older women like you? I, I guess I was... um. Both. I'm going to say I was attractive to older women since a child. Um, I, I don't know. I, and again, I was I was a child trying to act like a man. Being, being agoraphobic, you, you might have a hard time approaching a woman who's... 
who's who's my age yeah. um yeah, right and it might be appropriate for it right and i didn't know and i didn't know that was wrong because my family used to tell me hey man find a girl your age you know but you know but our relationship i mean who are you to tell me this now when you couldn't tell me anything even when i was doing good you know, so I didn't really take advice from them as far as my relationship. I just did what I wanted to do. But something deep down inside of me always thought about that, that girl my age where I, you know, where I could have a baby and a family and grow old together. You know, obviously, fortunately, you can't do that with a woman that's 23 years older than you. Are, are you lonely? I'm, huh? Living this lifestyle, are, are you lonely? I'm extremely lonely. And um, the only thing that doesn't make me lonely is my dogs. <laughs> um, to tell you the truth, you know, even if I, I board them for, for four nights or just one night, you know, it, it makes up for all the loneliness that I went through for the last two, three weeks or months, you know, so I try to fill my schedule up with as much as dog boardings or dog walks as possible. And as at that moment, I have to either go outside or do a meet and agree with the uh, pet owners and the pet to see if it's a good fit or nine times out of 10, I'll tell them to come to my home. Does it make you uncomfortable to even do those meetings? It would make me uncomfortable and there's no dogs around. But I'd normally use the dog as like my technique to get away of not communicating uh, uh, professionally with people since I lack social the attention on the dog. And so they love when I make my joke. How oh, high I be my baby, you know, so they like the jokey, um, you know, it makes them feel comfortable when they're taking business trips to Chicago or California. It's a, it's a coping mechanism. Absolutely, absolutely. And then when they're home and they leave and their dog is by themselves with a person that they totally don't know and they just met online, it, it, and they come back to pick them up and then they rebook you like they did uh, for Friday again, uh, it feels awesome. It feels like the best thing in the world. And this is just a, a dog, um, a business, that's making me feel like that. So imagine what more, I can't imagine what more is out there that can make me feel much more alive than what I'm already trying to feel. Yeah, it's, it sounds like it's just, you, you just long for love. Right, I, I mean, I feel like I lost the way of communicate. Because again, it plays a hold of you, you know. Uh, I, 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 could, I like to consider myself a very communicative individual, but unfortunately I've been, secluded for quite a few years with just minimum access to go outside voluntarily. So the communicating, I guess, slacked off, you know, so I don't really, yeah, you know. I mean, not, not interacting with other. Right, humans. but I don't think I'm a bad person or a criminal because of that, or I should be uh, neglected. It or makes you, makes you uncomfortable to, to go to a restaurant with, with lots of people? It does. It even gets me uncomfortable taking the train right here. Yeah, I was surprised that you were willing to come out here. It really was. So, uh, you know, I, I masked up and put my ear, my ear pods on and, and pretend I'm sleeping knowing I'm not sleeping. I don't know, it's something in New York City when people doesn't want to... You're doing a great job. You're doing a great job. When they don't want to see anyone, they just pretend they're sleeping, you know, just to, until they're stopped. But, you know... What would you say is your biggest fear? My biggest fear is... is dying alone. My biggest fear is growing old alone. Um, I always think about having kids, but um, that's just one thing that I learned. Again, this is why I really appreciate the, the places that I end up going when I made a mistake in my life, like boot camp. Because um, if it wasn't for this place, I would have never graduated from school. I would have never had enough um, um, patience and and self-discipline to uh, know that i'm not ready for a child to know that um this is going to lead to consequences if i make this choice so this this place i always grateful for but i i am very fear of of being growing old alone with 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 not leaving a child in this world as something part of mind you know where but i, I just never was good to in relationship feel where I can find or be or feel like I'll be accepted because you know the other 35 year old guy doesn't have a criminal record and probably has super career and super money and guarantee security for a wife and this is just things I cannot promise 
you know. Do you feel like you were loved when you were a child? Uh, when I was a child, I was pretty much like the redheaded stepchild. So what people call is why I decided to run away from Pennsylvania. I just couldn't take that uh, abuse no more. I was physically abused by my father when I was a kid. Um, I was verbally and sometimes physically abused by my stepmother. And let's not mention my stepbrothers and stepsister that was also physically abused about. Um, so I really didn't have love in my home growing up, but just um, pretty much acceptance because, you know, I have to be there. You know, when everyone goes school shopping and gets the new boss where I grew up at or the new Reeboks, I always found myself getting the second down, hand-me-downs of my step siblings that are not using it no more. Mm -hmm. When the Xbox 360 came out, uh, I was always getting the Sega Genesis and the Nintendo regular, you know. So, I mean, I don't really call that love, you know, but just acceptance because they have to be here. You know, I have to be there, you know. What, what, what emotions do you go through? I've been going through a lot of uh, lonely emotions. I've been going through a lot of anger emotions, um, extreme stress, where, I, where I've checked my iPhone on the Heart of Fire app and whoo, my stress level is up there, 90 something. You know, so when I see stuff like that, I try to maintain my levels more, much downer on whatever I do, whether it's uh, playing uh, country music that I like to hear, you know, and put it down so I don't be judged by my neighbors, like, what is this guy hearing, you know? Um, or I'll just probably put like a show or lose myself in TikTok or uh, reach out to pet owners and see if they need my assistance, anything to just try to keep distracted from the feelings that I'll be feeling when I'm alone, you know, and not loved. And like I said, it's okay. I I've been learning to deal with that for quite a while where I'm already used to it. But I know that there's more of me just being locked away. Like I'm a really, really bad person. You know, I know people make mistakes, but there should be some time for that. I find myself even trying to want to go to Ukraine and fight because the army don't want to let me have a chance in our own country because of what happened 30, 20 years ago. You know, so this is what, what stresses out so much whether you go to school or graduate or complete and did a whole 360 degree change and decades pass, unfortunately, it will still pop up. So then you, you, you ask yourself, what's left? If this is all that I have, whether well, 20 years pass and another 20 more years pass and we're at 40 years, well, what's really there? What's the purpose of asking and telling people to change, to stop making mistakes, to don't do that, to change your life and do everything if they're still going to deny? Whatever progress, whatever accomplishments you have made for over two decades, they'll still always be there permanently until the day you die. And a lot of people can't take that out here, fortunately. I was one of those people that couldn't take that, unfortunately. But I learned what happens when you can't take that and you lose your cool. I've seen the hands-on. They don't care. They'll violate you, take you back to prison, put all sorts of names in the news of he's past bad criminal, long sheet of record. Forget about the changes and sacrifices that we've been trying to make, that I've been trying to make. They don't want to hear none of that. They just put in this bad thing. But I learned that this is not the way to go to keep on holding composure, even if you don't know how to socialize with people, even if you have still mixed emotions from your childhood at 13 and you're now 35, you still have to not give them what they want, whoever they are. And I'm not just saying one agency. I mean, unfortunately, we're dealing with corruption in this country. And there's no joke. There's no way of hiding. And I don't need proof. I mean, the proof is out there every single day on the media, Donald Trump's raid yesterday, everything. And we just need people to start taking taking these steps to save our environment, to save our people, because everyone that out there aren't really violent. They're not really evil. They just are losing their mind. Like I'm supposed to be losing my mind, but I, I learned not to. 
they have it. And if we could learn to work together, maybe people will actually help us. This is what I think. And if not, then I'll go back home and lock myself in my little cubicle room and watch my furry friends. But I know that's the, that's the only way. I've been doing that way. I'm, I'm trying to search if there's any other way out. Have you ever seen a therapist? I tried in the past. But again, this is where I say the system is systematically corrupted. Uh, I've, I've been open with therapists, psychologists years ago. Uh, I even tried to take their advices and get on medication like Prozac. I, I stopped all that. I realized I don't need that to communicate well. Like you mentioned earlier that I communicate well. I'm not on medication and I haven't seen a therapist for quite a while. So I try my best to give, to give me my own medicine. Whatever it is, self-discipline or motivation in my head, I try myself to get my own therapy or even look up random 1-800 numbers just to speak and ventilate because um, the things that I try to go on therapy, they, they still look at you like a crazy cuckoo, a 7.30. You know, oh, he needs this and we need to hold him now by force. Just because you mentioned either not want to kill yourself, but... What's the point of living? The same thing I'm mentioning now. And because of that, they hold you against your will. They have to put in those paperwork. This is what my brain tells me from everything I've been exposed on the news, on social media, on everything, even outside the neighborhoods. That paperwork goes to the uppers. The money comes in. You know, the uh, trillion dollar uh, rescue plans. That's all that's divided to psychologists, to police departments, to Supreme Courts, to social services. But we never see any of help. The only ones I've seen that are getting that is the workers. Police officer driving a 2021 Mercedes Benz. Social service workers and welfare making $101,000 a year. That is not good with me. It's not, it's not fair. Because if they're getting $101,000, why are we still dealing with the same exact problem before the $101,000 you got paid? So this is what shows me that no one cares. The city is overwhelmed with so many by the books, they're just turned into numbers. They are no longer humans, we're a number. Now call in PA1583, that's welfare. Let's go to Department of Corrections. Inmate 0781583, report. Let's go to criminal court to see if a traffic violation. Now we're calling traffic number 1583-2004. What happened to our identity? What happened to our human rights? Where did it go? So this is why, again, I lock myself away from society without being violent, without breaking the law, without anything, without a career. But I'm healthy, I'm not sick. I have never tested positive for coronavirus. I have never tested positive for monkeypox sexual transmitted diseases, anything whatsoever. So we literally have just a human being wasted because no acceptance. You know, and this is why I just say, okay, let me step away. You know, because I know where this leads to. It's just going to lead to more. No, 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 you can't, you can't. And people can't take that denied every single day for years. This is why I started feeling like, why are they treating me like I committed murder? Or I committed some kind of sexual act? A, a, a crime? Or, or some type of domestic violence a, a crime? I was a child when I made this mistake. A child. It's not like I got arrested for selling drugs two years ago or when I was 21. I was 15 turning 16 years old when they finally charged me for that. I'm 35 years old right now. 
I have a lot of people out there that loves me because of the work I provide and the trust I provide for their pets. I know how to pick up grocery bags from old ladies that live in my building across the street. After I'm telling NYPD, get the hell out of here. But you're not going to do nothing about it. You're just sitting there on your phone and you're arresting someone on their phone. That doesn't make sense. This is, this, is, this is where I feel like God told me I have to come here to fight. This is why I tell my Russian friend that I met on TikTok too as well. I cannot leave to where I was going to North Dakota and run away from New York City to escape this and start a new life over there. Okay, because I, I was planning to go to North Dakota, the capital too. Um, but something told me to stay here. I had to fight. Not physically, illegally fight. I'm talking about legal fight. I don't care how hot it is outside. I want to go out. I want to protest. I want to legally protest. I want to legally put everything out there. Peacefully safe. Until, until something is being done, this is where I live at. You know, I shouldn't have to run away to a different state because nothing's good, going good in my state. And I fear of running away from state because we deal with racists every single day still. And, you know, half of these places out there, again, North Dakota is 89 percent Caucasians, 3 percent African-Americans and 2 percent different races, all the way from Native Americans and Spanish. I don't know if I'll be accepted over there. And that's 1600 miles away. That's a two day trip on Amtrak. I did all my research. <laughs> Trust me, because I'm really serious about it. So this is what holds me back, too, is like, will I be accepted? Will I, will I vanish? You know, I don't have family or friends out there, but wow, how beautiful those houses look. Wow, how Safari and Siri says that everyone in North Dakota are so nice and they welcome you. Wow, how all this sounds so good, but is it safe for a Spanish person like me from New York City that has a, a history from, you know, my felony from the 20? And this is what made me never leave when I do want to leave. So I just say, it's either that or stay here and fight and fight and just keep fighting like you've been doing, Joel. Can't do nothing else. Take care of your dogs and keep fighting. And hopefully one day someone, someone finally say, hey, man, enough is enough. We need to help these people out. You know, we need to find out their stories is valid, uh, research it, confirm it. But we cannot continue ignoring these people. Because if we do, then what's the point of having them still living in this society? There's nothing else, you know? And I want to grow up to be able to interact with people again. I miss people, especially the good people that, like my dog pet owners, that appreciates me, even appreciates my low rates, because God knows I need the money. Obviously, I don't have a career. But for some reason, I don't charge $75 a night like hundreds of people on, on the app do that has hundreds of reviews. I only have nine reviews. Yeah, I'm still charging $38. It's not about the money for me. It's about acceptance. It's about connecting. That's worth more than money for me. All right. Joel, thank you so much for sharing your story. Thank you, sir. I wish you the best of luck. With thank you very much. You're working up against. Thank you. Thank you.